Good afternoon, everyone. We're heading to a new monetary system globally that incorporates gold. Central bankers say so. Typhoon Haishun direct hit over the Korean Peninsula and up into China's northern corn belt, Heilongjiang, total loss. Two million acres of now rot disease ridden wheat. Justin Shandong and China's clean plate campaign to stave off famine moving online, as well as women now receiving reduced amounts of rice. Less for girls, same for boys. And my refrigerator top set up using a single grow light for microgreens because we're going to all need to eat and grow our own food. And in the year 2020, it's so important to keep your body functioning at optimal performance. And collagen may be the closest thing we will ever get to a true fountain of youth. After all, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and essentially the glue that holds it all together. Even worse, various lifestyle factors that you may have been exposed to, such as poor diet, lack of sleep, smoking, pollution, stress, all of these can deplete your collagen levels even faster. And the year-over-year -year loss of the most abundant protein in our bodies is the key reason that we start to look and feel older. When you're middle-aged, you're only producing half of the collagen you did in your youth. My focus is about digestive health because the change in our diets from foods being unavailable and moving to seasonal harvests and the entire spectrum of availability of foods is changing. There's so much more to talk about with the benefits of collagen. You can visit healthwithadapt2030.com to learn more. The link's in the description box below. Starting off here, this headline Definitely an eye-catcher, former central banker, talking about the world's heading to a new monetary system. This is about the global reset where the dollar is going to lose an incredible amount of value. And the new system that emerges will be a hybrid that will include gold. This came from the central banker out of Finland, Penti, who still sits on the Vioma Gold Advisory Board. Now the question was, do you think the current international monetary system is sustainable and I think we all understand that, no, with so many people out of work and never any money printing, no value being put back in the society, very little manufacturing, global shipping down to nothing, and countries almost producing nothing of value except printing paper. But back to the article, Penti, former central banker, says we are moving toward a multi-reserve currency system in which gold, the dollar, the euro, and other currencies take part. That sounds like a basket, like a special drawing, right? Like an SDR to me. And I'm wondering what the dollar value will be inside that percentage of basket of currencies. And the greatest takeaway from this is if gold is put into and assigned the greater role of a new monetary system arrangement, price of gold is not only going to stay stable for such a long time, but it's going to increase in value and hold that value because it's going to be part of the base, the basement, the cornerstone of the new monetary system. This also bodes well for silver. If we go through the gold-silver ratio over the last 3,000 years, it's generally around, what, 18, we'll call it, to 1. So if the price of gold rises up and it reaches parity back to where it was over the last 3,000 years, 18 to 1, so 18 ounces of silver will purchase an ounce of gold if you're holding gold or silver to protect your wealth. And the reason I put up this image here of the Spanish treasure, now if there is gold confiscation, they're gonna come for the bullion for sure. So if you're holding bullion, if you bought bullion online, if you have an account, you're holding bullion in a bank or whatnot, they're gonna come for that in the United States. In my opinion, they're gonna to try to do it once more. But there's a huge difference between gold, collectible, shall we say antique gold, so gold billion could be confiscated, but they're not going to be coming for your doubloons. And the confiscators would probably not come for your 1910 $20 gold piece that was true issued money of the time. There's a huge difference between bullion and actual collectible coins. I think the collectible coins might slide under the desk here, if you will, in terms of confiscation. Because can you imagine what insanity that would be? Okay, we're going to take your 400-year-old premium priced shipwreck treasure gold just because we're that in debt that we need all the gold. See, I don't think that's going to fly because the people who write the laws that create the laws are the elite who buy this type of gold. I think it'll get a pass. My personal opinion and Lynette Zhang at ITM Trading talks well and in depth about this. I encourage you to check out her channel 
incredibly knowledgeable about what might be confiscated during the reset. Now, how does this move into the food shortages? Well, if the food gets too expensive for you to buy it, you're going to pull all that money out of the general spending economy anyway. So the collapse is coming, whether this COVID thing here was not or is, everything was in a collapse mode anyway. And this grand solar minimum driving food prices into the stratosphere is just a repeat in history. And then these powers that be knew the economy was going to collapse anyway. So if you can't salvage it, what would you do? It's a scrapyard right now. And paying 5x or 7x more for food, game over. Now, China's going into a famine at the moment, and to add insult to injury, Typhoon Haishun just ripped over the Korean Peninsula with the highest wind speed ever recorded, the highest amount of rainfall ever recorded, and as you see, it transited over North Korea into China. This is a major, major wheat growing and corn growing area inside China. Now, currently, growing corn, but if you look at the percentages, it's almost 25% of all production for China just got wiped out for their corn. Now you know the central areas have had the biggest floods in almost 400 years. Bridges washing away that were 800 years old and the entire warehoused and supply chain ready to deliver foods have been wiped out as well. Supermarkets haven't received deliveries in all over a month in so many places. So how prepared are you in your homes? I mean this is for real in China. It's almost a total wipeout of the crops. And now what they had anticipated to save the day in northern China, Heilongjiang, has now been wiped out. If I were going to steer a hurricane using geoengineering, that was the nail in the coffin that just took out China. Now the price of corn is still lagging behind because at that gargantuan of a loss, okay, there's a little bit of uptick, but it should well exceed the 2014 prices. And the food crisis on Epoch Times, they have a full rundown. There's about 30 articles up there, but I just chose a couple real interesting ones here. I linked everything in the description box below. You're going to have to use some kind of translate inside your browser to be able to read a lot of these articles because they're full Chinese. So Shandong, which is a province in China, they have this thing called wheat stem rot happening. And it's covering 12 million mu, which is a Chinese measurement 12 million mu is about 2 million acres. So you can get a gauge of the size we're talking about. Now, this is just one province with one particular type of crop. And even in the Chinese media, they're talking about the imminent food crisis. Now, we're not talking about a food crisis. It is going to go into full famine. China's out trying to buy what they can, but they're also being stonewalled in some areas where they're not able to buy what they need. And these numbers are looking dismal. For the amount of food that they have stored that was wiped out, which they won't admit to or give figures to. And they've gone into this massive campaign of saving food. And even here, spreading food crisis, China's Horse Industry Association calls for saving food. So now they even want the animals to eat less because that animal feed can be diverted into human consumption. Think about that for a second. When will they start eating the horses? Because through history, the animals always go first. Pets, livestock... Whatever it is, those are eaten first, and then it comes down to whatever's left in the fields and any kind of reserves, and then it's down to wild foraging, and when that does not work, there's a huge problem. Now, the experts at the CCP, Health and Construction Committee, are also talking about conservation of edible oils, soybean oil, corn oil, whatever it would be for cooking, and it also highlighting the food crisis. Now, Chinese media is not allowed to actually write this unless it's approved. Now, Epoch Times is trying to consolidate a lot of hidden figures and bring out the truth inside the murkiness of the Chinese media. Epoch Times, one of the top spots to go to to get true Chinese media consolidated news because they have reporters over there digging inside China to find out the real facts. And also, we're talking about the granaries here, and this is where a lot of lost storage had happened. Granaries wiped out as uh, the floodwaters came through so many areas that had never been touched in hundreds of years. They thought they were impervious. They didn't really build them for flood damage or possibilities of flood, and the granaries were just completely saturated and wiped out. So in Jilin, this is another province, a large number of these black worm corn so it's a fungus that gets in after it's been wet and then the water recedes. We saw this up in Nebraska a couple of years ago in the United States. Biggest floods ever recorded in the last 200 plus years in the U.S. Now they call it wicking where the bottom layer of water will get into the corn 
And even though the top wasn't affected or touched by the floods, just like an oil burning lamp wick, that moisture is going to make it up to higher levels in the column there inside the storage silos. And a lot of these were just in straight up warehouses in bags. So understand, they're going to try to still use this tainted black worm corn and bring it into the supply chain because they'll have no other option. So tainted food, how many times have we heard about this over the last 10 years across China? Well, this is it in earnest. Stem wheat rot or black worm corn, whatever, it's going to get processed into a factory and sent on. Now here's where it gets really interesting is the Clean Plate Initiative to try to stave off this famine a little bit longer. In the restaurants, they're limiting to how much food you can order per person. It's one person per dish at the table. Now, also, if you want to, you can order food online and have it delivered to your home. And this app here called Elimi, which is very much similar in Indonesia to Jak Jak Go or Uber Eats or anything that we might know, delivers straight to your house. But again, they're trying to reduce the size of the dishes that these delivery companies are able to deliver to the homes because they're worried about you throwing it away and they can't observe you. They can't spy on you in the home on whether you're eating it or throwing it away. So they're reducing the size of everything deliverable. Best figures I could find here were from 2013 to 15 in the secretive nation because they don't want to air their dirty laundry. So China's food waste mountain you're looking at about 18 million tons of food waste per year. But again, figures are hard to come by, and those consolidating straight out of China.org.cn. That's a state-controlled media mouthpiece. But even with these figures that they gave back in 2015, five years ago, was so much food waste that they could have fed 30 to 50 million people per year. Now, since the population grown, there was more wealth, people ate more food, ordered more dishes. This number had definitely increased. Not sure on the percentage. Like I say, numbers are hard to come by with this thing because that is dirty laundry over there. They don't want aired. So then we find this most incredible, you know it's in play right here, right now, Tianjin Women's Lunchbox in Guizhou. They're on loudspeakers with the propaganda every 10 minutes during meal times in canteens and in cafeterias of all these businesses and factories and office buildings, whatnot. Broadcasting slogans, do not waste food. Posters on the walls, do not waste food. And also, wherever you go, you're inundated by the media with electronic promotion, whatever it might be, changing billboards, do not waste food, do not waste food. Everything's about food suddenly in China. And they reduce the amount of rice that women can eat across the board. So men get more rice than women now. The test is going on in Tianjin, which is an East Coast city with one of the largest ports in the world, outside of Beijing, about two hours. Government-mandated program, of course, government official. So when we come over and take a look at the August 26th Tianjin launching, they reduce the amount of rice women can have per meal from 275 grams to 225 grams. Now, approximately 28 or 30 grams per ounce. They're getting about two ounces less of rice than men for the same meal. Men get more. Plus, the dishes are two meat and one vegetarian. They've reduced the amount of food females are going to be able to eat. So it's going to be up to yourself. And one of my solutions was, this is the top of the refrigerator, microgreens, using a grow light. So on the right, what we have is the mung beans. And on the left, cow peas. So you can see the density of the leaf is a little bit different. The mung beans, you really need to get to those because they get super stringy. The leaves are edible, but the stems are really stringy. They're barely cookable even at this height right here. You need to get them almost right when they come off the tray. But if even if you wait a few more days with the cow peas, oh, they're so succulent. The stems just snap like a fresh pea. Incredible vegetable to cook. I usually trim off the bean itself and go for the leaf. I let the leaf get a little bit taller as well, another couple inches up, and then I'll go ahead and harvest that. But you can definitely see the difference between. Now this is what I'm doing as a single solution for myself, utilizing a refrigerator top for two or three trays of microgreens in my house, controlled. I have the fan up there as well, get the humidity under control, but the grow light provided by Brad Buttrick at Hidden Harvest. So with all these changes coming, you are going to need to implement your own solutions. Because as we look through these fingerprints of the Grand Solar Minimum, there's always decreased crop yields, volcanic eruptions, colder temperatures. And the ultimate effect is the economy is crushed every single time due to increasing food prices or inavailability of food, famine, and population migration. 
It's just what happens during these grand solar minimums. That's why I call it the fingerprint of the grand solar minimum. I talk more about this on my Patreon channel forward slash adapt 2030. If you're interested in more information, join me over there. When China tries to buy what it needs, it's going to drain the world of any access food. At some point, the countries are going to cut them off because they won't have enough for their own internal citizens. That's coming 2021. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video, and I'll see you next time.